Hey there, everybody. I uh, hope your Tuesday is going well, and uh, I'm excited to kind of be here and, and chat a little bit about, uh, you know, what I think it, both as a marketer and as a, a fan of breweries is a extremely important topic, which is uh, which is Google My Business. Um, first off, my name is Devin Hoffman. Uh, I'm a digital marketing specialist here with SiteSeeker. Um, we are located in upstate New York. I've been with uh, with SiteSeeker for um, just over five years now, um, and before that, I worked for about ten years at the Saranac Brewery here in Utica. So um, I always love the opportunity to kind of combine those two uh, passions and professions of brewery and marketing, and, and really kind of uh, give some insights and, and help out uh, where I can. Huge shout out to Andrew um, and this group. It's it's fantastic to to kind of see. Uh, such great growth that it's had and, and participate in this. So I'm, I'm happy to kind of talk through this as a topic. Um, I'm going to go right ahead and, and dig in. You can see I already got uh, Google here up on my page. Um, but the the reason for the interest in presenting this topic, and those of you who have seen me speak maybe at New York's um, conference or Ohio's conference, uh, you know that this is a favorite theme of mine. Um because I really do believe that it's it's one of the most important uh, opportunities, features, and in ways of easy ways of uh, of getting your brewery, your brand, your information out there accurately to the people who are looking for you. Um, even so, to, to say one of the first places you should think of and, and look um, when it comes to kind of positioning you for consumers who are doing research. Uh, the kind of three primary things that I want to kind of talk about is what is Google My Business, um, how you can claim your listing, how you can get into Google My Business if, if you can't currently, um, and then actually take you into the back end and tell you what all these things are and, and what features exist to you. Uh, but Google My Business kind of as a starting place is your business profile that exist inside of Google. And so you see up on the screen here, and one of the reasons um, you know I, I did this as a search to start is I'll be going on a, a family vacation to Michigan in, um, in just a couple months here. And so vacation for me is visit as many breweries as I can uh, in a 10 day window. And so I personally like to kind of prep a little, see you know what's what's available, what's out there, where I'm going. And so with where I'm going in Michigan, I'm only about an hour uh, south of Grand Rapids. And so I'm planning a trip early on doing a Google search here. You can see I'm seeing a map and this is just in the search results, a map here um, and then some initial listings. Now, these places that you're seeing in these listings here into this map, these are referencing your Google My Business account. And so if I made the option that I wanted to kind of hear more or learn more about one of these selections. Now it's brought up, this one's showing us permanently closed, but it's brought up their Google My Business profile here. And we're going to get into some of these other items by name and reviews and, you know, location images and things like that, because they all play a really, really important role, not just from the algorithm standpoint inside of Google, uh, but also for your benefit of the, image like that I'm getting right now um, in, in atmosphere, ambiance, beers that are available, and just relaying as much information you can through this platform and listing. Um, you can see by clicking that, it brought me here into Google Maps. I had another search that I had done as well for breweries in Grand Rapids that brought up you know, the specific pins here. And so similarly, each of these that we're seeing here are going to be these individual Google My Business listings. And so we can prop one up, see a little bit more information, photos, high-level details. We'll walk through some of the more features that are in there. But when we talk about Google My Business, this is what we're, we're talking about. Uh, one of the biggest areas where you'll see a benefit in, in more of an immediate standpoint is also going to be from mobile. Um, you know, there's really two main ways people are leveraging uh, maps. 
um, on their phones. So you've got Apple Maps, which leverage a little bit more of their own information, and there's ways to correct uh, details in there. But then if you're using, you know, Google Maps or just the Maps app um, and looking for directions, it's going to pull based on your Google My Business listing and information. Um, so the first thing is, how do I claim it? And a thought might be, well, I haven't created it. I haven't, I haven't done it yet. So I need to start from scratch. I need to create a Google My Business listing. That's not necessarily true um, because Google is obviously constantly scouring the internet. So even if you haven't created a listing, it very well likely exists just by auto generation and, and, and dynamic population of content that existed on different websites. You know, it could pull from Yelp, it could pull from TripAdvisor, just anything else that's out there. Um, so you very well could have a listing. So, you know, one of the first things you'd want to do is search inside of Google or Google Maps and see if there's a listing. If there is, in addition to these fields you're seeing here, down here, you'll also have a manage this listing or claim this listing. And that would mean that it's a listing that's unclaimed. So it's only being populated by user-generated content and dynamically, you know, selected information inside of Google. Um, that's going to be your quickest way. This particular one that I've, I've clicked here has already been claimed, um, but that's going to be the way that you'd find to claim your listing. Now, what happens when you click that button? Well, there are two options that Google presents for you to verify that listing. Uh, the primary one it has is it'll send a postcard to whatever address is in the listing. And you just got to wait three to five days. You'll get a postcard in the mail and you'll say, perfect, I've got this code. I can go in now. I can verify the code and the postcard they sent me and boom, you're in. You've got access. Um, additionally, you can do um, a phone call and it'll just do like an automated uh, code over the phone, same process, enter it in, and you're golden. In the case that, and I, I was working with one uh, client, and they, um, they didn't get direct mail to their address, and they used a main menu system, call routing system, uh, so they, it wouldn't get to the person who would be able to track that code, you can connect with Google support and they'll manually have a person call and, you know, and there's ways, but for 95% of the instances, when you click, you know, uh, manage this listing, you'd be able to access it through one of those, uh, those avenues. The benefit then is once you've got a listing, what can you do? Uh, how can you sign in? How, you know, what, what's, what's that mean? And, what I'll say quickly is one of the big benefits to being able to manage your listing is again, to control the information. So what's huge um, and Google uh, especially loves it is user generated content. And you probably might be using it for your social, you know, um, someone takes a picture they post on Instagram, you really like it, you know, you're going to leverage it. You're going to give them credit, that kind of stuff. And so similarly, you know, tools like Google want to be able to show what other people experience. So they want to see the pictures that I have. They want to get a review from me, and I'll show that in a little bit. Um, but as often as they can uh, highlight other people's experiences, they want to maximize that, which is fantastic and totally understandable. Caveat of that, or one of the, the pitfalls we run into is is sometimes maybe the information that that person had isn't completely accurate. For example, maybe they went, you're open 12 to seven and they tried to go at six. And for one reason or another, you had closed at five that day. They might be able to go on and say, Hey, they're actually only open 12 to five. Um, if you don't own your listing, you know, Google might just accept that. And now what people are seeing is an inaccurate representation primarily because you didn't have the ability to change that. Um, or another example we see sometimes is if you've got a restaurant, you'll give a burger and a beer and they'll take a couple bites of the burger and say, this is delicious. I need to take a picture of this, but they're, you know, half drinking beer and they're half eating burger all squished up is probably not the best picture. Um, but if you haven't kind of complimented your account with some photos you 
prefer or like, you know, sometimes when people search, that's what they're going to end up seeing. Um, but just kind of then to, to transition to, all right, you've got your, um, your login, everything is, is set. Now, what do I do? Where do I go? So I'm going to uh, click over into this tab and see up here, uh, you can get to the back end um, by um, google.com slash business. So this is the Google My Business kind of default URL. So I'm going to sign in here. And I have multiple businesses here because obviously as an agency, we've got multiple clients using Google My Business. Now, for the sake of this, I'm going to show you the back end of Site Seekers just so I can keep some of my clients' information uh, private. Um, but it's a good to see that because it's very likely that some of you have multiple locations. Um, you know, or maybe you've got a brewing facility and a couple blocks down the road, you've actually got the tap room and restaurant. Well, you want to capture that that's where the brewing facility is, but maybe it's not open to the public. Um, and so you want to push that traffic down to the tap room. And so things like that, that we typically see uh, fairly often, it's not an issue at all to say, I've got four or five locations and I've got four or five accounts that I'm going to monitor in the back end of Google My Business here. Um, but for the sake of just looking at one at a time and just and just starting with one, um, I'm just going to kind of show you for SiteSeeker what it is that we, we see and have here. So it's going to default to this layout you're seeing here. We'll call it our dashboard. This is home, as you can see on this menu you have here on the left-hand side. So the home is just kind of a, a summary of a lot of the different things that we're seeing, whether it's quick links, uh, like you see here, create a post, a photo, and an ad, um, you know, send a response to a message, um, you know, manage things directly through search and maps, stay connected, <clears throat> and then getting down into some high level metrics here. Uh, I'm not going to walk through these quick links one by one because we're going to look at the different tabs we have along the side here. Um, but you can just know that, uh, you know, in some cases, there's a lot of fast um, routing to, uh, to some of the, the sub elements inside of that menu. One thing that's worth note, uh, noting as we walk through this is there, unsurprisingly, 2020, um, did a number of things inside of, of the Google, my business space in terms of, um, the necessity for accurate information. Uh, and then also a sort of a, a deep review of reviews, <laughs> you know, a, an audit of reviews. And, and um, from an information standpoint, one of the biggest things was because there was so much changing in certain states due to COVID. Are we closed? Are we open? Is it pickup only? Is it delivery only? Um, you know, are, are masks required? Are they not? Is, are vaccines required? You know, a lot of things like that it became more than ever very, very important to have that information. Um, but also that's a perfect example of the importance of continually reviewing your information to determine if it's still accurate. Um, I still here in, in May of 2022 have conversations with restaurants and breweries and, and bars who, you know, they haven't required masks, you know, as a mandatory um requirement in in a year and a half um but their google listings still say mass required for everybody because when they did that in march of 2020 it, it, it still stayed so it's always good to kind of do almost a self-audit and say is the information that i'm seeing here accurate um, another part of that is we'll talk about reviews um they actually suspended reviews back in 2020 because things were so were, were changing and moving and happening so fast that we were seeing an uptick in negative reviews for things that were out of the control or the hands of a business. Um, so if a business was forced to shut down, you know, they might not have gotten to updating their Google to reflect that. And so if someone tried to go and then they left them a one star review and said, it says they're open, they're closed. Well, if they could have been open, they happily would have been open. 
Um, and so there was such a change in the uh, um, in the kind of average star rating of reviews that for about a initially, I think a three to four month window, Google suspended them um, because that was a lot of the cause of, of what we were seeing in, in presenting those reviews. So just, uh, you know, another support to the importance of saying we want to look at, you know, all the elements that we have and in, in making sure we've got things up to date. So um, one of the first things I'm going to go from home, just kind of going down here, you see posts. And very similarly to the topic of a post on Facebook, um, this is a post within Google My Business. And uh, you have the ability to generate posts and um, pretty pretty simple updates um, that will go into your listing here. Uh, so if this you know particular brewery had a post, it would show up in their Google My Business listing. Um, you can see here, so no, no post, but inside of this is where posts would have the ability to um, to show up. What are we posting? Why are we posting? Um, important details, features, new events, updates. Um, you can see, you know, just for, for SiteSeeker, we haven't had any ourselves in, in a year, but um, we were posting, you know, about a, uh, a type of advertising that was important to capitalize on. Here we were talking about um, a, a post around a, you know, community strong video during um, the pandemic we had put together or when we were featured as a best place to work for a brewery. If you're having, um, you know, a festival during the summer, a concert, new beer release, new event night you want to roll out, you know, that's where you could definitely promote these. And you create it just by coming down here and saying, okay, what am I making? Well, it's not a COVID-19 update. Um, you know, it's actually not an offer but you'd have the ability to kind of showcase a, an item and put a title and when that offer is running from. So in addition to what's new, you've got events and products. So if I just wanted to say, Hey, I want to give people an update that uh, we just moved to a new office, you know, six months ago. And if you're looking for us, that's where we'll be. You could post a picture of the new office, write that as a post. Maybe we'd have a button that says, you know, with a call to action, and then we could publish it, um, and you can control that right here. So it's something that's worth trying if you're, you know, want to capture that you're going to be having a concert or an event. You know, it's one of those situations you think of somebody like me could be on my phone, could be traveling, looking for the next brewery to stop at, and now I see one and it's actually got a note that they've got a concert that night. Yeah, I want to check that out. Um, and it just kind of adds into your Google listing the same logic you use for posting in inside of social media. From posts, you've got info. So here is the, the real kind of initial, what are we talking about? What are we doing? Where is it coming from? Um, so your information here, and you can see the elements, elements that are editable have the pencil here, and you can kind of go down and you can make adjustments. This is what's going to reflect inside of this listing. So I will just to kind of show it, I'll go to maps and I'll search for site seeker. So now here's where our offices are located. Um, and then here is our Google My Business listing inside of Google. And so the information you see captured right here Location, hours, uh, website, phone number, I'll explain that, booking link, those types of elements are all controlled right from what we put up in here. So here's our address. Now these, these are going to be our kind of highlight keywords. And just like with everything else in Google, you want to optimize this. This is optimizing your listing and saying, what do I want someone to type in for us to show up for? Because if I didn't have that, site seeker by itself does not you know uh in terms of definition equal marketing to google so we've got to tell it hey we're marketing we do web design we do advertising you know we can be a consultant things like that 
And so not a ton of people, fortunately, are searching Google Maps for marketing agencies. So um, you'll probably see from an insight standpoint, your breweries would have a lot more impressions and traction. But if you're a restaurant or if you offer tours or if you've got uh, outside dining or an event venue, things like that, um, or you offer maybe private events, you really want to capture your keywords so that when people are searching, you know, in a map looking for something near them, you're going to pop up. Um, and then continuing down, you know, we've got the areas we primarily service here. You can see it opens up and there's some extra ones um, that we've called out specifically. And then uh, our hours here. And then here's where it gets important where we've got more hours in this calendar here, um, because this is where I believe there's a lot of opportunity to plan ahead and just work quick adjustments into your Google My Business listing um, to the benefit of your brewery. I obviously have said I've, I, I talk about Google My Business a lot and as a benefit. And one of the reasons of that is I've experienced both the pros and the cons as a fan of breweries and as a tourist um, of, of inaccurate Google My Business accounts, you know, unfortunately costing me the ability to meet a brewery um, or visit a brewery. And that can be, on one hand, it, it says they're open and I get there and they're closed. Or on the other hand, it says they're closed. So I don't try and go there and I find out later that they were open. Um, and uh, there's actually been instances where I've gone to places from a listing. And it's just empty. <laughs> it's just a, a, a dirt field. There is no brewery that has been there, you know, any time recently. Um, and it just was an inaccurate, you know, an, an inaccurate listing. Um, for certain situations, you can address that. Uh, you know, one of the things that we saw a lot over the last year, year and a half is um, hiring shortages were forcing changes to, you know, hours, uh, offerings. If maybe we're not offering food tonight because I, I only had one cook and they're sick, you know, or, or those kind of things happen um, in a on the fly um, approach. You know, I believe there is a benefit to saying, oh, I just realized that maybe tonight or tomorrow we're going to have to close early. So I want to come and I want to adjust a, uh, a specialty hour. It's only, you know, you can see some here where they confirm it for Memorial Day or 4th of July. We'll look at those. But you can also make the case for, you know, tomorrow. I don't want to change our hours from being open till 10 on a Wednesday because after tomorrow we'll be able to. But for tomorrow, we're going to have to close at 6. So I want to make sure that that's captured, you know, so I'm going to find – you know, this date in uh, tomorrow, and I'm going to change it to instead we're open, you know, whatever the time may be, you know, nine to five. And, and now tomorrow your Google will reflect the accurate hours once you submit it, but then starting the next day, it'll revert and, and that specialty date will go away. Um, we're open normal hours tomorrow, so I'm not going to submit that. But one of the ways that this is beneficial, and I will say it as a brewery, it's crucially important that you do it specifically around Memorial Day and 4th of July. Um, because I, I myself travel every Memorial Day with the intention of visiting breweries. And um, and it's tough when, you know, I give the benefit of the doubt because I, I, I understand it. Um, but when you find that a place is, you know, is closed and it says open, or even if you're doing extended hours, the other side of that. So we are going to be closed this day. So I'm just going to mark that we're closed. We're also going to be closed on the 4th of July. So now I can apply those. And uh, and it's going to kind of just push a review, make sure that I'm an admin, and then it'll accept these dates. So now if you were to look for site seekers, you know, it would say closed. Um, similarly, you can enter you know, your phone number, how people can get in touch with you, social media handles. So for our business, we have the ability to book a 
uh, meeting with us. So we use Calendly, and that creates the ability that if someone's like, hey, actually, I'm interested in them, how do I get in touch with them? You can actually just directly, you know, link out. So it also becomes a resource for uh, a way to look at the features, offerings, and get in touch. And then we have, like I said before, all those keywords um, that we we service and support. So if people are searching for these different terms, we have the ability to show up. Um, and then same, you know, the important information you see, accessibility, um, you know, we're a, a veteran owned, you know, we could add in some amenities, crowd items like that, description of us. So this is like that first primary location of information. But the main thing on this that I, I want to kind of point out is in relation to those hours and that ability to say, you know, we're going to have to change tomorrow or I'm already can plan our next couple of events that are going to extend us open and you can pre-plan those dates out. Um, I've got a client who uh, it's a, they're a restaurant and they shut down for the month of January just as a little bit of a reset. And so I didn't want to change all their dates to closed here because then Google might uh, interpret that as they're closed permanently. So what we did is we just picked the days they typically would have been open in January and put it as closed. And for those four weeks, if you went into Google, it said closed until we got into February. Um, this is where I'll also mention the benefit of your phone. Google My Business has a mobile app. And so you can access what I'm looking at here just with a more mobile user experience and more of the highlight information, but you can make adjustments right from your phone. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be something where you're like, ah, so-and-so called in and, and we're going to have to close early or even on a beneficial side, hey, we've got the ability to stay open a little bit later um, and it, we're getting a good number of reservations or there's a party or an event happening across the street that we might get some traffic from. Uh, I'm going to stay open a couple extra hours later tonight. I don't expect you to say, I've got to go to my laptop or I've got to go to my office, you know, and, and sign into Google My Business and find that thing Devin was talking about and add a specialty hour. But what you could do is if you've got a lull, um, you could pull out your phone, get on the app, go to that, say today, you know, and we're extending it or tomorrow or, or something like that. And you have the ability to do it on the fly. So that way, if there is somebody who's also traveling through or who's also, um, you know, planning their next stop, you have the ability to, to kind of capture them. Uh, I'll, I'll use this as an opportunity to reference a, a example. I had a conversation with a brewery years ago and um, they had the ability to be open until 4 a.m. And their listing said they were open from, from 2 to 8. 2 to 8 p.m. every day. And so I asked them if that was true, like you close at 8 or do you stay open later? And they said, well, we're typically here till midnight or 1. Um, sometimes we'll stay later, but, you know, sometimes we'd close earlier at like 11 and we'd get people complaining. So we just said, let's just put it open till 8 and then we don't have to worry about that in the future. And I said, well, in the eyes of a researcher or <laughs> a traveler, um, you know, you're you're giving up five hours a day in, you know, somebody who's planning on going out at nine o'clock, you're already showing his clothes. They're not going to make the trip over, you know, or, or something like that. So it's okay to, to ebb and flow a little bit. If, if, you know, circumstance or, you know, situation calls for it, but you can update in, in real time to, to address that. Um, from info, I'm going to skip uh, insights here for just a second and come back to that. We go into after info um, and, and, you know, in time and that representative information reviews is really going to be uh, the most important block in connection with Google, my business. Um, the reason is, is because people um, love knowing if other people had a positive experience, what can I expect? Um, and so, you know, I, I understand it's tough because sometimes you'll see a bad review maybe on a beer because that person doesn't like that style of beer. I understand that that's painful um, or they like don't like the type of food you offer. 
and so they didn't like the food you they had you know and like so sometimes reviews can be very tough but reviews is what is going to control where you're showing up in in someone's search results so if i toggle back to my um my map view here here i'll close this out so there's a, a number of uh factors that are going to kind of determine how things are going to show up here and so it's not to say five star is first and 4.9 is second and 4.8 is third you know and that kind of thing but it's a combination of all the information so you know a in this case you know a 4.7 with 1200 reviews if i scroll down there might very well be another 4.7 or a year of 4.8 that just has less reviews um but we've got a 4.1 at the top they very well might just have more images and then also you get into the, the content of the review reviews with over 150 characters and pictures are more valuable to google than a review that's just you know five stars and move on with it um so there's always a benefit to to not just getting reviews but getting detailed reviews and one of the ways that you can kind of really support your own case in getting people maybe more inclined to want to leave a review and things like that is to reply to them. Um, and so, and, and that includes the good or unfortunately sometimes the bad. So you can see here, we can look at, you know, all our reviews. So we've had someone who left stars and said, excellent. So we just jotted a note back, you know, thanks um, here. Someone said they decided to upgrade their website, a little more detailed. So we gave a response there. So you can set it up where you get an email when a review comes through, or it could just be something where you say, I want to see if we've got any recent reviews. You see, you can go to those that you've replied to, maybe some that are sitting on a uh, need for extra replies, um, or sorry, need for a reply and, and things like that. But if you go into, you know, ones that have reviews, if I scroll down here, I can see them. And so like I said, the ones with extra characters and images and things like that, um, they weigh a little bit heavier. So if I go down to Google reviews here, I'm immediately seeing the ones that have a lot of um, content and pictures, content pictures. They reviewed this one or replied. So you can see those ones get weighted heavier. So sometimes when I'm doing this, I can see my own reviews because I, uh, you know, I, I leave longer reviews with pictures and things like that. Or you can see the summary here of what this total score is made up of and how it's weighted in some of the, the key call outs and in reviews that you have here. Um, in addition to reviews, you can have, and unfortunately we don't have any calls. No one's called us from our Google My Business profile, but you can also track insights related to your phone calls. Um, if you want, what Google will end up doing, if you if you want to track the history, is it'll use a forwarding number. You can enable it. And so it'll call a different number than yours, but that's how Google knows, oh, this is this particular business. And um, when you answer the phone, it'll say, you know, you've got a call from Google and it'll actually track more detailed information to your phone calls. If you say, I'm not really interested in that, I just want my actual number that when people click, it calls me. That's what's controlled up here by info. Um, but if you wanted to go a step further from a reporting standpoint, you've got the ability to do that here. Similarly, you can do messages. And so you can uh, set it up where you have um, the ability to direct message, get direct messages through the Google app. So it's probably very similar to what you're currently getting with Facebook, or if you've got live chat set up on your website. Um, but somebody can go and say, you know, hey, can I bring my dog? Um, do you have any happy hour specials tomorrow? You know, those kind of things. And they can, if you have it set up, you can get not just these messages sent, but you can set up messaging alerts and, and almost treat it like a text message and have that extra line of communication with people. Um, additionally, one of the really powerful uh, 
you know, opportunities you have to showcase you in, in your brewery is, is going to be through pictures, pictures, videos, things like that. And so this is where we get into, like I was saying before, where you've got your content that you've added and you've got user generated content. And so in those reviews that we were looking at an example of, those are now tied to that brewery's photos. Um, now you can add your own and say, hey, these are pictures that I want to add um, and, and highlight and showcase. But also anybody who's taking pictures would have the ability to add those pictures as well. Uh, one of the things that I'll note, because this is where it kind of gets into that, you know, marketing sometimes is reading my mind or it's in my head. Um, I, for example, have location services on in my Google Maps uh, mobile profile. When I walk out of a brewery, um, if I took a picture during the time that it stamped me as being in that brewery, it'll say, hey, we saw you were just at, you know, Druthers. Um, do you want to add these pictures you took? Maybe I took a really cool picture of a bottle on the bar. I'm sure I want to add that. Maybe I took pictures of me and my friends and I don't necessarily want to throw that up into their Google profile. So I can pick and choose and say, yeah, I'll add these three pictures. And now they're a part of that profile. Um, and so I have the ability to also see how many, you know, views my picture gets or likes, you know, and as a, as a user, I'd actually be able to see the impact or the influence I've had on adding content to certain breweries. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, that's great to like really let people fill this profile for you as well. But sometimes it might not be, you know, the pictures you want necessarily. So you want to make sure you're also um, adding your own in. And so you can actually see here, you can sort of look at different categories. And so we have the pictures we added. So here's a picture of our office, our logo. We added a bunch of uh, videos that we made, testimonials or um, product highlights. You know, here's a picture from a company retreat that we did. And we cannot just see when the picture was added, but the amount of um, impressions it's gotten. So this particular picture has gotten 17,000 impressions. Um, this particular picture from our retreat has gotten 890. Uh, these videos have gotten six or three or 100 uh, views. So we can see maybe what that performance is. And we don't have any customer generated photos because the ones that I would add would actually come as a, uh, um, come through as the admin, but this is where you could see what different people have, have added in. Um, 360 has picked up a lot of what people have, um, liked to see to plan ahead and that's where you can come with a 360 camera and you can actually zoom in almost from street view into the, the business itself and just like you see on street view you can kind of go around and see the bar and, and things like that and this probably looks familiar this is google street view that those google cars um, capture but the same type of camera mounted on its roof the same logic there um, holds true for um, for this effort. This is our office right here. And um, so you can add, you can add your 360s directly into your account through through 360 here. Then you can get into, you know, additionals, the videos like I mentioned, or maybe you're like, hey, I want people to see what the insides look like, but I, I don't have a 360 cam. So you can do an interior, you know, where people can see the, the look and the layout and everything like that. And you can really control um, control your photography. Then that's going to get us into some of these ones we're going to see down here, where um, it's possible that it, um, it there's parts that fit. Also, maybe maybe uh, it might not be the time or, or anything like that yet. So products is a good one where you can list products inside of your listing. And so if I go back to Site Seeker, you know, you can see there's different tabs, things that we can engage with. If we wanted to carry products, um, that could be added as another, you know, tab inside that listing. For us, it, it doesn't fit, but maybe 
as you're gearing up for the holiday season, you know, you want to sell swag. Um, you want to sell, um, you know, whether it's wearables, glassware, you know, maybe it's uh, experiences like tours or gift cards or things like that. You know, you could set up where your products are available right inside of that Google listing. Um, because at the end of the day, the goal of all of this is to make everything easier and reduce the number of steps you're asking a customer to, to do because um, they say with like every click you ask someone to make, you lose 50% of the people to make that next click. So if you can say, hey, they go to Google and they searched for brewery and I showed up first, I either want to give them all the information they need to visit me or even if I can get a transaction right then and there, you know, all the better. And so you can actually track products right in here. Similarly for services, and as you saw up on our info, when we looked, we had all those different services we offer. So you have the ability to kind of control what your services are and, um, and you can kind of add details to it, descriptions, or um, if it fits, you can put pricing behind it. Maybe one of the services, private events, if you have weddings at your brewery and that's going to be $8,000, no matter what, you can kind of capture that sort of information. Um, in here. So this is where you can put, you know, uh, tours, restaurant, that kind of stuff. Um, then you get to website and this just so that it's not misleading. Um, you have the ability through Google, my business to create a website. And so for, um, small businesses, we see them utilize this a lot because they might not have the funds to design and build their own website. Um, and so they'll say, Hey, listen, this gives me the ability to have something I can link to, you know, and, and I can, I can have a website. Um, so this is really the, the Google, my business website builder and editor where you, it populates all this information based on what we've identified in all these tabs above, and we can edit the theme. We can change the, the text. Um, there's limitations to it. This is obviously showing our posts. There's not a lot you can say, oh, hey, I want what I want here is a nice, you know, countdown clock that's going to, you know, you're limited within in this. But if you currently don't have a website and, you know, it's just not in the cards to build or launch a dedicated website, um, you can definitely create one within Google My Business. Click publish up here in the top right. And now you'll have a um you know, a, a website you can link people to. And the benefit is, is if you're uh, diligent in updating your info up here, then you'll have accurate information uh, uh, available on your site. Um, but if, if you've got a website and you're like, you know, that's, then I would just stay away from this tab so you don't accidentally, you know, make it live and then have something that's might be outdated with posts and things like that. Um, users, this is always going to be a big one is just who has access to this page. We're an agency. So we've got a lot of people on our team here. So you can see that we've got, um, a bunch of different names of, uh, my coworkers who have access to this page. One of the things that I hear, I see, um, is it's not letting me claim the listing because it's already claimed, but I don't know who has it. <laughs> it wasn't me. Maybe it was the person before me. Maybe it was two people before them. Their email doesn't uh, exist anymore. There's ways to combat that if you're in that situation through Google support. Um, but a really good way to just avoid that situation from the start is whether it's now or whether it's when you first set up your account, just add um, either, you know, the, the, the owner or the president or maybe someone in that position or create a four- um, accounts email address, brewery name at gmail.com or just uh, accounts at your your website, you know, your brewery name's domain. And so that way there's always access, you know, that, that you've got um, to the account. And then coming down into um, these final tabs here, because um, I do want to try and leave some time in case people have questions or anything like that. What we see is create an ad and also link to ads. These two are in reference to Google Ads, which 
Google My Business, Google Ads are all part of the same uh, Google suite. Google Ads um, is an incredibly powerful tool that um, you know you can use when people are searching in Google to you know have your ad shoot to the top. It's called uh, pay per click because every time someone's going to click on your ad, you're paying Google. And so it can get you to the top of the page, but it's going to cost money. Well, very similarly, um, ads, or sorry, uh, ads can be run inside of maps. And so um, I'm going to just say, I don't know, breweries in New York City, just see if any. So you can see there's different tabs here that are showing up. Um, I'm not seeing any of these that have ads. So it's, you know, it's again, it's defaulting a little bit into uh, reviews, um, star ratings, averages, population of uh, images and stuff like that. Um, let me search restaurant. So no, I'm not seeing necessarily with restaurants either, but the um, ability exists that if somebody wanted to run, it's called a location extension ad through Google ads. Uh, what it would do is this red pin that you see here would actually be a green pin and you'd show up in this top, um, this top result inside of Google maps is a Google, my business listing after the name, it would say ad. That's how you can tell if, if it's controlled by an ad, but you have the ability from the back end, if you've got a Google ads account where you can create an ad, that's what this is. This is that Google ads logo. And then you can link your account to Google ads because that's an effort you're going to necessarily do in Google ads, but you can start it, monitor it and, and control it a little bit more from here. Add a new business um, is another way from what I had mentioned earlier where um you can go directly to say, oh, I want to, we're opening a new account or sorry, a new location, or, you know, maybe it's branching out. I know some breweries that get into, you know, distilling or things like that. Um, you know, if you've got dedicated businesses you want to highlight, you know, you can control that through or start that process here through out of business. What I wanted to go back up to was insights because, and the reason I wanted to go to insights last is because insights is reporting. Um, I think it's unbelievably important, but you need to kind of have um, accuracy of the masses in order to say, okay, now let's look at the information that's available. Um, Google My Business's reporting is kind of uh, ever evolving. It's constantly updating. And so, what I've done for, for clients and I recommend is, is taking snapshots um, to see, you know, what insights are, you know, are available so you can kind of monitor it. Um, I will note that Google's in the process of upgrading the insights tab, um, but, you know, so you can see there's going to be a new profile, but just for the sake of definition, I'm going to walk through it as we see it here. Um, but this is showing us initially how people search for us over the past quarter, and that's direct discovery and branded. Um, so in the last quarter, we've shown up in 2,000 searches. I'm going to be fairly confident in saying, again, because you're in a B2C space that's very heavily aligned on people searching for um, restaurants near them, breweries near them, things like that, this number is probably going to be much larger, which is good, hopefully. Um but you can see like what's the main way people are finding you. For us, it's discovery, which is you know people who are searching for one of those categories, product, service. Um, and the lowest is is five percent is um, is branded, and then twenty one percent is direct. So it just gives you an idea of what is really driving a majority of that uh, awareness or recognition. Um, down here, you can see where are people seeing us. I think this is really powerful because I've shown the two examples earlier. If I was looking, planning my trip to Grand Rapids, I could do it through Google Maps or I could do it directly through Google. Now, that might still lead me to Google Maps, but it's starting in search, which is just a lot more powerful. So here you can see for us in this past quarter, we've had 
585 maps results, which is the red, and 1,500 search results, which is the considerably higher number. But we are seeing some, you know, engagement on both. And you can go by which day in that period is there growth. Um, you might be reaching a little bit of seasonality now. I'd invite everybody to look the week after Memorial Day weekend. And I imagine you'd probably see some jumps of people that are traveling and they want to stop at the brewery and they want to grab some beer for the trip or do a tour, or, you know, grab something to eat with their family and kind of see the impact that that has. Um, from there, you can also can track the, the actions. So we saw inside of our listing, we have the ability to go to our website. We have the ability to get directions. We have the ability to, um, you know, to, to call. So I had mentioned earlier, we hadn't seen anyone call us. So we have, you know, in the last quarter from that listing, 92 actions took place. So for us, the majority of those actions were to go to our website, 83 of them. But some people, maybe they had an initial uh, meeting we set with them. You know, they uh, eight people requested directions and then we got the one call. And then you can see for the direction requests, where did they come from? And there's actually the ability to heat map that and so the majority of ours came from this one uh, town a couple miles over of people who were directing or requesting directions to us. And then if you had phone calls, they track here, busiest day of the week um, and things like that. And then also for all photos last quarter, we had two point or 2,600 impressions inside of Google businesses like ours, which is defined by all those keywords we were identifying, would have 1,300 impressions. So for us, you know, we're pretty happy with um, with seeing that figure. And then you can also see the quality of the photos, both owned by us and consumer generated, um, or sorry, quantity of photos that we can see show up there. And so... Um, so this is a good way to see, you know, how are we showing up? How are people seeing us? How are things performing? Um, you know, and, and insights can be really powerful. One of the ones um, I want to share quick. Uh, just a second. So I'm going to, oops, pull this over quick. I'm just going to do one of those. Um, one of the things I want to show is for this, you know, this is a restaurant client that we have. And, um, and if you see, you know, looking at the last month, I mentioned they're a little bit more in the same space, that B to C. Um, and we can see, you know, they've done really well in, in the discovery you know, they've got uh, 17 times as many searches as we've had in the last quarter, in the last month. Um, but they're very heavily on what people are going to look for in maps and search. So you can see that they've had 48,000 results in the past month um, on maps of 56,000. And because it's a restaurant, they've got people calling for reservations. They've got people requesting directions or visiting their site maybe to see the the menu, you can also see, hey, where are those showing up? Maybe it's certain zip codes or country codes. Um, when are people calling? You know, how's that information break out? And so, um, you know, for, for your industry in that B to, B to C space, you can probably pull a lot more information from seeing those insights. Um, I know I'm running low on time here. So the one other thing I wanted to mention um, is a part of that benefit of coming back and, and continually and constantly um, reviewing this is because of that ability for um, users to, to make recommendations on the information. I said it before, if I leave a brewery, I get a, a push notification on my phone. It says, do you want to add these pictures? In addition to that, it'll also say, can you answer a couple questions? 
And so I try my best in those instances to be accurate. Um, but some people might not have all the answers. So one of the ones I see a lot is, are pets allowed? Are masks required? Is there a wheelchair ramp? Is there, you know, where's the actual front entrance? And, and those types of things. And so I can say, yeah, of course pets are allowed. Yeah, of course, you know, there's there's a handicap parking. Um, that might not be accurate. And so you might say, hey, I've been up to date with my Google My Business. Everything is good. And then have someone come with a dog, you know, or, or something like that. And it creates an issue and say, well, why did this information pop up there? I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't do that. Um, you have the ability to kind of cancel those recommendations. You just have to look and, and see. So sometimes if someone said, hey, Sightseeker, our hours are actually 12 to 5, before it, it pushes that in as 12 to 5, it's going to show it here as what somebody recommended. And it'll give me a week, week and a half to accept or reject um, if I do nothing, it'll accept it. Or I can come in here and say, no, 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 no. It's eight to five, leave them as is. Um, you can see earlier, you know, half hour ago, I added that we were closed on 4th of July and Memorial Day and it said pending and now it's since accepted them. So it can be pretty quick because I'm an admin on this particular account. So that is, in a nutshell, in an hour, <laughs> um, Google My Business. So depending on where you are with Google My Business, if you don't have access to it, if you don't, if you know, if you're not running it, the first thing you want to do is go to your listing, see if it says like this, own this business, then you can go through that process of getting, you know, your, um, your pin in the mail to claim that listing. Um, if it's lost, if it's already claimed, you don't have access to it, you know, always feel free to reach out because somebody can, uh, um, you know, can connect with Google for that. Or if you have it, I'd say take a walk through the back end, click through those different tabs, look at your insights, see if there's, you know, things that, that need to be updated and even look in the front end and see if some of the information being shown doesn't seem accurate, um, you know, or questions people have asked historically. And, you know, and just know when you're making changes or when you're thinking of, you know, things that have to be adjusted or anything like that, I always just try and say, you know, for somebody like me, if I'm traveling to a state I've never been to or a city I haven't been to um, or a brewery I don't know of yet, I feel people tend to say, I'm going to jump on Facebook. I'm going to put my changes, my new menu, my new hours, and then stop there. But I might not follow you on Facebook yet, hopefully soon. Um, but I'm always going to start with Google. Or if I'm traveling, I'll say breweries near me or breweries in this particular city. Um, so you want to make sure that there's an accurate representation of your business showing up there in Google. So thanks again, everybody. Devin from Sightseeker. Big shout out to Andrew um, for, for having me and putting this on. And uh, and hopefully if I have a chance to visit your brewery soon, I, I look you up on Google first and, uh, and, and we're, it helps us link up together. So I'm going to finish this beer that's been sitting here and I, uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you.